Hi there, it's Farmer Brad, and on today's video, I'm going to solve a problem that I've been having with my incubator. The incubator requires a certain level of humidity, and it comes with a tray, but that tray keeps on running out of water. Um, so what I'm going to do today is show you how I'm going to build a reservoir using this four gallon bucket. And let me show you the supplies that I have. I have some reverse osmosis tubing. This is what I use on my automatic chicken water buckets. I have a float valve and this is going to be so that the reservoir um, will supply the float valve and then we'll be able to adjust the level of the water in the container. Here is a bulkhead that works for reverse osmosis tubing and then I added three quarter inch rubber gaskets to help seal it up. I have a ball valve that will allow us to shut off the opening, disconnect it, and then fill up the bucket at the sink. Then we got a screwdriver. As far as tools, I got a Phillips screwdriver to adjust the float valve. I got some channel lock pliers. I have my power drill with a um, step drill bit. Um, I have a sharpie to mark where we want the hole in the bucket. So this will be sitting up on top of the incubator and so I'm thinking that I'm thinking for stability we need to have um, the bulkhead aligned here so what we'll do is we'll have it up a little bit from the bottom and then mark the middle So I have an X there, I'll place the bucket like that. Now before I drill, I want to size up um, which step to try to go to. So I'll try to first go to the, is that um, one half. Okay, so that almost fits, so that's a snug fit. Um, I'm going to go get a deburring tool to make that a little bit bigger and then it should be able to pass the threads nicely. So here I have a deburring tool and part of the reason why I'm just going to deburr it is uh, because the next step up is going to be way too big for this. And we do not want four gallons of water pouring down on our incubator. Okay, that should work. Now I'm going to put that rubber gasket on there and then feed it in from the inside and start turning the threads so we can pass it through. Uh, it looks like I need to make it slightly bigger. Okay. Okay, so we have that there and then I place the other gasket on there and then I tighten this down. That's what these channel locks are for. And 
I'm holding, I'm holding the inside so that it doesn't move around and that looks pretty snug. So the next step is we need to put this ball valve in line so we can block off the water so it doesn't all run out of the bucket when we don't want it to. So I'm going to take my pocket knife and carefully cut a little piece and easier to do it with scissors. Um, now how these quick connects work is there's a little collar and when you push it in it bites on it. In order to release it you have to push against that collar and then you can pull this out. I'm not liking how that looks so I'm going to um, get my scissors. Uh, can you go in my workshop and the scissors are there. Okay, so I'm just going to make that a cleaner, more precise cut. Then you just place the ball valve on there. Make sure that that's secure. So our water reservoir is completed. Okay, so this is the water reservoir that came with my uh, GQF 1502 Sportsman. Um, now it has these specially designed slots for putting in um, they're, they basically act like sponges because how humidity works it's, it's, it's about surface area it's not about volume of water and so uh, you put you have up to two sponges to sort of adjust the um, humidity of it. So there are some metal flaps that are on the side so I really need to think through how I'm going to position it without those without those uh, metal flaps getting in the way because I really only have one take with this um, I do like this space here for it um, for the float because then I can still put in the other uh, thing and I feel like if I put it on this spot it will be too close now the other thought is this will have a 90 coming out, but then it would be blocking this other one. So, um, I'm just going to try to get it positioned as high up on this, just below the flap. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so I have the hole where I'm going to start the drilling and I'm going to very carefully drill in and go very slowly. Now this bit I have taped off to be the correct size for the float valve. Okay, let's see about where this is at. pretty good.
and snug it up. And you might be able to see, but on here I drew a little pencil line to get an idea of where that metal flap is. Um, and it's just a guide to get this tray in the center. It's designed so that the air flows off the front and around and circulates the best possible way. If this ends up interfering with this, I should just be able to bend down that, that edge a little bit so that it can fit in there. Um, okay, looks like I need to adjust this float screw. And I'm going to Get it so that the water does not overflow. There, that should work. Now this part, I have to take Teflon tape and put it on very, uh, put quite a bit of it on. Looks like I might run into some problems tightening that up. Um, okay, it looks like I need to cut a little groove on here. I'll be back. I'm going to do that with a oscillating uh, tool that I have. So here I made this uh, modification and that allows me to Go ahead and tighten this all the way. And coming out this direction is good because there's some uh, rubber ports on the side. Uh, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to fill this up and um, connect the two and just make sure that there's no le no leaks going on. So I'm going to hook that in there. And I'm going to connect this end over here. And now I'm going to fill this up. Okay, so I have some water in here. I'll connect this and I'll open up the valve and I'll lift this up. And now you should be able to see that water is going into here. And there you have it, the float valve has stopped. So now I will disconnect the other end of the hose and we'll get it placed in the incubator. I have some eggs in here, and that's why I'm needing to make this video how this fits.
awesome. It cleared it very nicely. Now there's these uh, portholes over here on the side. And uh, I'm going to see if I can Yeah, I'm going to switch these so the open one is on the top. And this this has a plug like that. That. that is good. And now I'll get the bucket. Right there, so go ahead and shut that. So here's the bucket, and I'm going to cut off some of the excess. I can go ahead and open that up. And then the incubator will keep the right humidity. It won't dip down. It won't put the eggs in jeopardy. Um, so this was an easy fix. Now they do sell this package basically <coughs> on the GQF website, but I figured since I make automatic chicken water buckets, I better do this in house. Um, so, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful uh, for you if you have an incubator like this. The, the 1502 Sportsman by GQF. Um, now, Hopefully this water will last for, I'm hoping for two weeks, instead of having to add water every two weeks. Now when it comes time to lock it down and they're ready to hatch, then I'll put in that um, sponge in order to bump up the humidity to 60 to 70 percent. But right now it's anywhere between 45 and 65 um, percent humidity with just filling up that basin in there in that uh, surface area of water. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, we're getting really close to getting monetized. Um, we're almost there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.